This video is to talk to you about the basics of three-point lighting system. Before you, you see we have, in the studio, we have three lights. We have one here, one just over there, and one just behind me. Now I'll explain to you why we have the three lights and then I'll show you the effects of having three lights. This light here I've set up and I'm considering is my key light. As the name suggests, it's the most important light to set up first. Whenever you've set up your video sequence and you've decided that's what you want or your photograph, that's what you want, where you want it, then you get your key light and decide where that needs to go. That's very important. Make sure this is straight away the first light you do. Now your key light can either be, uh, as in this case, to the left, or it could be to the right, or it could be straight in the middle, whichever works with the lighting that you wish to create. In this case, I like it here because it's going to give me quite a strong shadow on one side, sort of giving me more depth to my subject. Now, the second light is the fill light. Again, it's quite easy. As the name suggests, it fills in the dark areas. Now with just one light from the side like this, my subject will have a very dark shadow on one side if my camera's positioned here. So the fill light has one simple job to do. And as the name suggests, it just fills in those shadows. And it's a reduced power to the power that comes from my key light. The third light is the backlight. The backlight is very useful to give a sort of a halo effect on maybe the back of one's hair of the subject in a photo or a video. It's best if I show you close up how it works. So this is the basics, key light, fill light, backlight. So now I'll turn on the key light, which at the present is set up as 100%. Just for example, I could of course adjust the power on my key light and I can very easily reposition it to get different effects that I want on the face. But let's just say I actually do quite like it from the far left hand side here. Let's position it over there and I like the dark shadows that it's casting on my subject. Uh, this is Nick, our little model. So that's my key light. I've positioned it and as I said I could easily reduce the power if I thought that the key light was too strong. That was at 50%. But I'm going to bring it back up to 90 so I think that's more than enough. Now as I said we've got a very strong shadow here and we may decide that that is maybe just too strong. So we then come to our fill light. Let's just turn it on a moment. And our fill light is now putting a nice part of light on the darker side, but it's not too strong. It's not too strong. You can still see there is a shadow on our subject. Um, as I have this set up at 30%, and if I increased it, it would basically match the key light, which is not what I'm aiming for here, as this is my fill light. So I want it just to be filling a little bit of light on the side, just there, so it's not such a harsh shadow. And at the moment it's set up as 25%, I think I'd go a bit more and go for about 30%. I quite like the uh, softer shadow on the sides there. It looks very good. Next, let's utilize the backlight. So just go over to it and let's turn it on. Now, normally I would prefer to have the backlight on the opposite side to my key light, but for today's purposes, I'm just using it this way around because that part of the studio is quite full. So I've turned on my key light and it is at about 43%. I'd like to have it just a little bit higher. I've raised it up a bit 
and I'm increasing the power just about 60%. Now I think you'll be able to see that our subject now has a nice sort of uh, halo type effect on one side of the head. It would probably be better, as I said, to have it on the opposite side to my key light, but that side's busy at the moment with cameras that I need for later on. So I would normally prefer to be having the backlight effect on that side opposite the actual key light. So I'd have it over there. Now, backlights are very useful. As I said, I very much like the sort of warm glow, sort of halo effect that they put on top of a portrait photo or a video. So they can be very useful. The backlight can also be used to put light onto the background if you need it to, or you can change it so it doesn't. So here's some light onto the background. I can just put a smidge onto there and I'm adding a little bit of light. So this light can have a dual purpose, not only a backlight onto our subject, but also can be used to add light onto a background or a backdrop. But I don't want it today, so I'm moving it off of that. I want as little as possible light on the actual background. So that's the basics, the simplest way of putting it. This is a three-point lighting system. And I very much start off, as I said, with our key light first. And I would position it first. So let's turn off the other two quickly. So that's our fill light off, that's our backlight off, and this is our fill light giving us a very nice look to it. And what I have a tendency to do is to turn on the lights once I have decided my key lights right and see how good the other two are at doing a job I want. So that's my backlight. And I think that does a pretty good job. I would prefer it on the other side. We'll turn that one off. Now let's see what our fill light is doing. So as you can see that that is a lesser power of fill light, giving us a nice bit of lighting into the darker areas created from our key light. And let's turn them all back on again. So this is our key light and this is our backlight. So that's the basics of a three-point light system.